the Battle of Kolobara was fought between Austria-Hungary and Serbia in November and December 1914. During the Serbian campaign of World War I, it commenced on 16 November, when the Austro-Hungarians under command of Oskar Posharek reached the Kolobara River during their third invasion of Serbia that year, having captured the strategic town of Aljevo and forced the Serbian army to undertake a series of retreats. The Serbs withdrew from their capital, Belgrade, on 29 and 30 November, and it quickly fell into the hands of the Austro-Hungarians. On 2 December, the Serbian army launched a surprise counterattack all along the front. Valjevo and Uzis were retaken by the Serbs on 8 December and the Austro-Hungarians retreated to Belgrade, which 5th Army commander Liborius Ritter von Frank deemed to be untenable. The Austro-Hungarians abandoned the city between 14 and 15 December and retreated back into Austria-Hungary allowing the Serbs to retake their capital the following day. Both the Austro-Hungarians and the Serbs suffered heavy casualties, with more than 20,000 dead on each side. The defeat humiliated Austria-Hungary, which had hoped to occupy Serbia by the end of 1914. On the 22nd of December, Posharek and von Frank were relieved of their respective commands, and the 5th and 6th armies were merged into a single 5th army of 95,000 men. Background on 28 June 1914, Bosnian Serb student Gavrilo Princip assassinated Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria in Sarajevo. The assassination precipitated the July crisis, which led Austria-Hungary to issue an ultimatum to Serbia on 23 July on suspicion that the assassination had been planned in Belgrade. The Austro-Hungarian government made the ultimatum intentionally unacceptable to Serbia and it was indeed rejected. The Austro-Hungarians declared war on Serbia on 28 July and that same day the Serbs destroyed all bridges on the Sava and Danube rivers in order to prevent the Austro-Hungarians from using them during any future invasion. Belgrade was shelled the following day, marking the beginning of World War I. Fighting in Eastern Europe began with the first Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia in early August 1914, under the command of Oskar Posharek. The number of Austro-Hungarian troops assigned to the invasion was far smaller than the 308,000 strong force intended when war was declared. This was because a large portion of the Austro-Hungarian Second Army had moved to the Russian front, reducing the number of troops involved in the initial stages of the invasion to approximately 200,000. On the other hand, the Serbs could muster some 450,000 men to oppose the Austro-Hungarians upon full mobilization. The main elements to face the Austro-Hungarians were the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and Uzis armies, with a combined strength of approximately 180,000 men. The Serbian army was commanded by Crown Prince Alexander, with the chief of the Serbian general staff, Radomir Putnik who had commanded Serb forces in the Balkan Wars, as his deputy and de facto military leader, Peter Bojovic, Stepa Stepanovic, Pavla Juris Exterm and Milos Bozanovic commanded the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and Uzis armies, respectively. The Balkan Wars had only just concluded and Serbia was still recovering. Over 36,000 Serbian soldiers had been killed and 55,000 seriously wounded. Few recruits had been gained from the newly acquired territories, and the Serbian army had been stretched by the need to garrison him against Albanian insurgents and the threat of Bulgarian attack. To compound matters, the Serbs were dangerously short of artillery, and had only just begun to replenish their ammunition stocks. Their supply problems also extended to more basic items. Many soldiers lacked any uniform other than a standard-issue greatcoat and a traditional Serbian cap known as a sikarka. 
Rifles were also in critically short supply. It was estimated that full mobilization would see some 50,000 Serbian soldiers with no equipment at all. The Austro-Hungarians, on the other hand, possessed an abundance of modern rifles and had twice as many machine guns and field guns as the Serbs. They also had better stocks of munitions, as well as much better transport and industrial infrastructure behind them. The Serbs had a slight advantage over the Austro-Hungarians as many of their soldiers were experienced veterans of the Balkan Wars and better trained than their Austro-Hungarian counterparts. Serb soldiers were also highly motivated, which compensated in part for their lack of weaponry. The Serbs beat back an Austro-Hungarian invasion in August, at the Battle of CER. It marked the first Allied victory over the Central Powers in World War I. Posharek was humiliated by the defeat and was determined to resume the assault against the Serbs. He was given permission in September to launch another invasion of Serbia provided that he did not risk anything that might lead to a further fiasco. Under pressure from the Russians to launch their own offensive and keep as many Austro-Hungarian troops as possible away from the Eastern Front, the Serbs invaded Bosnia in September with the help of Chetnika regulars but were repulsed after a month of fighting in what came to be known as the Battle of the Drina. Bojovic was wounded during the battle and was replaced by Zivarjin Misak as commander of the Serbian First Army. Prelude. Austro-Hungarian plans The army Oberkommando acknowledged that an undefeated Serbia severed Austria-Hungary's connection to the Ottoman Empire and prevented the completion of the Berlin-Baghdad railway. The AOK also realized that the Austro-Hungarian army's inability to defeat Serbia would discourage neutral countries, such as Bulgaria, Romania and Greece, from joining the Central Powers and would tempt Italy to open up a third front against Austria-Hungary. Nevertheless, the AOK was hesitant to authorize a third invasion of Serbia. This changed in September 1914, when Austro-Hungarian troops discovered a map in an abandoned Semlin bookshop, titled The New Division of Europe, originally printed in a Russian newspaper. The map was widely sold in Serbia and depicted the borders of Europe as they would appear following the war. Germany was to be divided into northern and southern confederations and Austria-Hungary was to be abolished, its eastern provinces given to Russia, Romania, the Czechs and the Hungarians, and its southern provinces divided between Serbia and Italy. Alarmed by the prospect of Austria-Hungary's disintegration, Emperor Franz Joseph personally authorized a third invasion of Serbia in early October 1914. Having just repelled the Serbian incursion into Bosnia, the Austro-Hungarian army regrouped and positioned itself for one final invasion before winter set in. Posharek was again placed in charge of Austro-Hungarian forces and was given command of the Austro-Hungarian 6th Army. The Austro-Hungarian 5th Army was commanded by Liborius Ritter von Frank. In total, the Austro-Hungarians had 450,000 troops at their disposal. The Serbian army had 400,000 soldiers ready to face the Austro-Hungarian advance. In mid-October, the Austro-Hungarians launched another thrust into northwestern Serbia. Posharek appeared confident. Soldiers of the 5th and 6th armies, he said, the goal of this war is nearly attained, the complete destruction of the enemy. The three-month campaign is almost over, we must only break the enemy's last resistance before the onset of winter. The Serbs were exhausted and demoralized. In a telegram to Putnik dated 27 October 1914, Stepanovich complained that the Second Army did not have enough shells to resist the Austro-Hungarians effectively and requested that he be removed from his command. Putnik denied the request but ordered all units to resist the Austro-Hungarian advance for as long as possible before retreating. This strategy had worked in Putnik's favor during the summer months, but heavy rainfall in September and early October had reduced all of Serbia's roads to muddy quagmires that made movement of troops, guns and wagons extremely difficult. 
Posharek recognized that the Serbian army was in a difficult situation. He was certain that a third invasion would bring him the decisive victory that he so desperately wanted. In Vienna and Sarajevo, Austro-Hungarian officials began planning for the occupation and dismantling of Serbia. The country was to be plundered and its territory used to bribe the neutral Balkan states into joining the Central Powers, with the Romanians getting the region of Timica Krajina and the Bulgarians getting Macedonia and southeastern Serbia. The Austro-Hungarians intended to annex everything west of the Morava River, as well as the cities of Skatari and Durazo in northern Albania. The Serbs living west of the Morava, or the compact masses of the Serbian element, as the Austro-Hungarians called them, were to be expelled and replaced with Austrian settlers, who would change the psychology of the region making Serbia more Habsburg and less Serbian in outlook. Ludwig Falakzi, section chief of the Austro-Hungarian Finance Ministry, wrote Posharek in October, recommending the West Europeanization of the Serbs with a strong hand as soon as Serbia was occupied. Posharek planned to launch a converging attack across northern and western Serbia. The 5th Army was to capture Valjevo and envelope the Kolabara River from the north, and the 6th Army was to secure the Jargodnia Plateau and outflank Serbian units on the Kolabara from the south. The capture of the southeastern Serbian city of Nis was Posharek's main objective. Nis had been Serbia's capital since July and was a crucial transportation hub for its military. It also acted as a clearing house for munitions produced at the arsenal in nearby Kragujevac. The city's capture would effectively cut Serbia in two and scatter the Serbian army. Third Austro-Hungarian invasion of Serbia All of the valleys of northwestern Serbia were swamped by constant rainfall. The mountains had been covered in snow since early October. Acknowledging the opportunity that such conditions presented, Putnik told his closest advisers, All my strategy consists in placing the Serbian national mud between the enemy's fighting line and his supplies. On 31 October, Von Frank's 5th Army pushed down into the region between the Sava and Drina rivers while Posharek's 6th Army drove west across the Drina and into the Jagodnia Plateau. Austria-Hungary's third invasion of Serbia commenced on 6 November 1914, with intense artillery fires drafting a series of Serbian border towns. On 7 November, the Austro-Hungarian 5th and 6th Armies attacked across the Drina. Despite being outnumbered and in desperate need of ammunition, the Serbian army offered fierce resistance but was forced into strategic withdrawal. The 3rd Army fell back against a road by the Jada River in an effort to block the Austro-Hungarian advance towards Valjevo, while the 1st Army retreated southward into the Serbian interior and the Uzis Army managed to prevent the Austro-Hungarians from crossing the Drina. On 8 November, the Austro-Hungarians Hungarians attacked the Serbian 2nd Army near CER Mountain and came within 1.6 kilometers of the Serbian front line, entrenching themselves at the foot of the mountain. The 2nd Army was given orders to hold the Austro-Hungarians down for as long as possible in, if its position became untenable, retreat towards the right bank of the Dobrova River and position itself so as to block the approach to Valjevo. Elsewhere, the Austro-Hungarians drove a wedge between the 1st and 3rd Army and forced another Serbian retreat. Later that day, the Serbian government held a joint session with the Serbian Supreme Command with regard to Serbia's worsening military position. Putnik stressed that it was critical for Serbia to hold the Kolobara and the towns within its vicinity and suggested that the Serbs make a separate peace with Austria-Hungary if this proved impossible. This notion was rejected by the Prime Minister of Serbia, Nikola Pasak who urged further resistance to the Austro-Hungarians and threatened the resignation of his government if peace discussions began. The session ended with the Serbian government and Supreme Command agreeing to fight on. 
Serbian retreat Putnik reasoned that Austro-Hungarian supply lines would become overstretched as their forces pressed deeper into Serbia, while the Serbs would continue to hold the railheads in the Serbian interior. On 10 November, he ordered a general retreat from the Jada and withdrew the Serbian 2nd Army to Ub and positioned the 1st and 3rd Armies north and west of Valjevo. Meanwhile, the Iruzis army took up positions to defend the town from which it took its name. The Austro-Hungarians pressed after the Serbs, hoping to capture the Obranovac Valjevo railroad. Clashes ensued and the Serbian army managed to prevent the Austro-Hungarians from taking the railroad for a time. It quickly became clear to Putnik that he had underestimated the Austro-Hungarians, who managed to bring their heavy artillery through the muddy Serbian country roads. They established firing positions on the Serbian side of the Drina and began targeting the Serbian army, which suffered heavy casualties. Morale plummeted amongst the Serbs, who were already significantly demoralized due to lack of cold weather clothing and ammunition and exhausted by the long retreat towards the Serbian interior. Putnik realized that his forces would need to regroup if they were to provide any effective resistance to the Austro-Hungarians. He ordered that Valjevo be abandoned and had the Serbian army take up positions on the Kolobara. The retreat towards the river was long and excruciating, with the Serbs being forced to destroy all bridges and telephone lines so that they would not fall into Austro-Hungarian hands. The Serbian army also abandoned most of its heavy equipment to speed up the withdrawal. Seeing that the situation was critical and that Serbian forces were lacking artillery, ammunition and supplies, Pasic sought the help of the Triple Entente. He sent a telegram to his envoys abroad, which read, Urgent help is required. Beg and plead. France provided the Serbs with munitions and supplies, while Russia and the United Kingdom expressed understanding, but failed to help. The Austro-Hungarians entered Valjevo on 15 November, prompting wild public celebrations in Vienna. Franz Joseph praised Posharek for seizing the town, cities across the empire made Posharek an honorary citizen and Sarajevo even named a street after him. Valjevo's capture led the Austro-Hungarians to believe that they were on the verge of defeating Serbia and that the Serbian army was no longer a coherent fighting force. But the scorched earth tactics employed by the Serbs during their withdrawal complicated the Austro-Hungarian advance. Although the Austro-Hungarians were right in assuming that the Serbian army was exhausted, its defensive positions along the Kolobara had been prepared months in advance. Kupnik's carefully timed withdrawals had ensured that the losses of the Serbian army were lighter than if it had stood and fought pitched battles with the Austro-Hungarians. Moreover, the geography of northwestern Serbia favored defensive operations since the approaches to the Kolobara did not offer any cover to armies invading. From the direction of Austria-Hungary and the river itself was surrounded by mountainous terrain. In October, the Serbs had fortified the Jeljic and Malgen mountain ranges in anticipation of an Austro-Hungarian attack. This gave them an advantage over the Austro-Hungarians as it placed him in control of all roads leading to Kragujevac. The Serbs also established a series of field fortifications blocking the approach to Nis. The extensive series of fortifications and the difficulty of the terrain which they face left the Austro-Hungarians with no choice but to conduct operations in the grueling Serbian countryside with almost no lines of communication.